And hello everyone! This is Dubious Physics coming to you in Total War Warhammer 2. It is indeed Scorpion Times playing my, uh, or continuing my moderately disastrous Tom King's campaign, playing as Camry, currently being overrun by dwarfs just managed to scrape through the last few major battles without catastrophic losses still recovering from the last catastrophic loss pretty much leaning entirely on some scorpion stacks at the moment but well it's uh it will hopefully maybe be a good time anyway thanks very much for dropping by greetings to novillian there in the chat it's great to see you hope you are having a pleasant day and, uh, well, it's time to get into things. Let's see, we got an item from the last battle. Various things happened. I did lose one of my temporary necrotects. I think I need to put that in an army again. And one of my Lich Priests was wounded. And one of my temporary Tomb Princes was wounded as well. I need to keep track of that, because my, my hero count and so on, so... That's kind of annoying that the sheer number of things that are happening to my heroes, because I need to remember, like, Ayashas. Okay, he has his Lich Priest. Utep lost a temporary Tomb Prince and uh, one of his Lich Priests. And he's the Treacherous. He's my main... Do I have the... Yes, I have the primary, uh, the bigger uh, scorpion thing on this guy, at least, so that's good. I need to recruit more scorpions, but I also need to wipe out all of these dwarf armies and get ready for Grum Brindle to land on western shores. Right now, I don't know that these armies alone will be enough to hold Grum Brindle's stack together with the garrison. Especially if he hits Xandri. Cetra's still recruiting back here. Uh, does he have any more... No, he doesn't have any more Ushabti Greatbow units to recruit. He's literally just waiting for his, uh... Necrotect and... Uh, Lich Priest. So there's no room to recruit people at the moment. Okay, let's start shuffling. Organizing. People will run. Um, right, you are just doing temporary work. Can you get rid of this guy? Try. No. Okay. Going great so far. Wait, he was supposed. To oh shoot! Because he had the. I... No, no, actually. I don't think he was supposed to go into an army. Ooh. Can make the assessment there. there um, you are meant to be a temporary necrotect. More slaves. I, need more. I guess for Cetra's army. That'll have to do for now. And I... Th yeah, this was Cetra's Lich Priest. Moving into position. Good, so Cetra's stack is done, except he needs a proper necrotech with a good trait at some point. My curse on these creatures. And you are a throwaway Tom Prince. I'll use you to I'll recon like towards Where? the north, see if there are more dwarfs coming, and dismiss. And my Blitch Priest capacity is maxed. Okay, let's see here. Tomb Princes... Um, 
<laughs> no good ones, but I'll recruit a uh I'll recruit a cavalry a, an infantry master. For now and just leave him here. Over here, Necrotech candidates. We don't want good just yet, but get income, get off a jar hoarder, and we'll leave you sitting there. Alright, now for actual armies. Lutefs is not in great shape. But I think he is gonna have to contribute towards wiping out those armies. Let's see if there are any. Not really much infrastructure con construction that's important to do right now. Let's get the skill points assigned. Um, yeah, sure. Get some magic resistance on this lich priest. These temporary tomb princes could actually cycle them out, even even as temps if they wanted to, because I can recruit tomb princes at basically max rank now, which is handy enough. I think Thutep needed six characters total to make his army work out overall. Okay, that's temporary army. Now this is my core stack of the region at the moment, even if it is somewhat depleted. Um. Let's not do personal combat just yet. I need casualty replenishment rate for the army. And the Slitch Priest. You have a horse? Yes, you have a horse. It's magic reserve, or recruit faction wide. You have immortality. Uh troop replenishment rate, please and thank you. My leeches advise a new action. Ayashes. Right, you have one of our most experienced lift priests, priests anywhere. Citra's still recruiting. You're still working on... Okay. So I guess these two will have to try and uh, try and deal with Grombrindle. I'll set in their action, their final actions in a bit. Arise, legions. And let's try and kill Fire these dwarfs. As well as top up our construct health. Okay, so I'm gonna manually fight these battles so I can top up the health of the, the constructs here. And minimize the damage we take as well. Because we are going to have to fight many more dwarfs. As much as I would prefer to mind my own business. Dwarfs pretty much dead set on dragging everyone and their mother into this war. They'd be much better served going up north and sorting out chaos. Well, if I were uh, uh, playing the dwarves, I'd stop here because I've taken pretty almost all the good territory down here. There's plenty other business to work on. But I am not playing the dwarves here, alas. One of these days I will <laughs> maybe play a dwarves campaign. They are allegedly my main after all. Okay, one, two. Cast off to the side, two. You'll be healing in that bundle. And. Let's get everyone arranged. Get some magic back. 
can pretty much heal everything up to heal cap as long as uh well up to heal cap as long as I have enough time. Okay. You're also a Tomb King on a thing, join the group. Group number two, Tomb King on a thing, join group number two. You all get in position there, and you are light. Okay, and you two are chariot tomb princes. You get in a group. You gotta sit in a corner, lich priest. You on a horse? Yes, based on that speed, you are. I'll actually want to put all the damage constructs in the same pile. Do I have any reinforcement? More reinforcements incoming? Uh, let's retreat one of the skeleton archer units to check. Because they just do not have enough armor piercing damage to be useful in this battle. Constructs, constructs, come on. Uh... Put those next to the Tomb Kings with the heal. Pop your heal over there. Sion of Nehekara. And more healing. More archers. Okay, retreat all of the non halberd from guard, I guess, as they're. The, d d without armor piercing, they're not gonna really do anything to dwarfs. If I don't see too much further, I'm, just, I'm, I'm probably gonna guess that. Done organizing this of the next heal in the cycle. Let's put the archers at the end of the the queue. Oh, I can treat these two skeleton spearmen units. The uh, guard actually a range. And the archers. Keep the healing going. Doing this battle to top up my units mainly. Do I have a Necrotech? I don't think I have any Necrotechs in here. Which is a shame, but as long as I'm not being pushed, I can probably get the healing done anyway. coming in. Uh, I think that's about the extent of it. My orders enacted. What are we dealing with on the other end? Iron Breakers, Trollhammer, Iron Drakes. I don't think we have any artillery to contend with. Move 
this up here. My will be done. Next heal will be ready soon enough. And I'll try and do a bunch of work with the uh, Lich Priest so that I don't have to run stuff into troll hammer torpedoes as much. Yes! Pretty much just healing up these two war sphinxes now. Up a bit, get people into position. Almost have those sphinxes towards full health, which is excellent. Reanimate upgraded is a very useful ability. <laughs> it's pretty much cooldown gated healing with no other limits aside from heal cap. Very, very handy if you can squeeze out the time to use it. It makes for, I'm sure, for fantastically engaging gameplay as well. Okay, I'll call that done. Time to do some casting. Bear in mind, range limit of their... ...ball hammers here. Don't want to be taking damage from that if I can avoid it. probably get a response out of them. If not, we can just do more casting. Glad that didn't miscast as well. Yeah, okay, they're responding out. Troll hammers are overall the biggest threat in the stack. And I should respect them as such. Yeah, I don't want to be get bogged down fighting the other infantry if I'm not killing the troll hammers in the process. He's back here. You into the troll hammers. My order. Ooh, geez, that hurts. Healing going. Damage resist, please and thank you. This scorpions are a little slow. Make sure those iron rakes go. Banishment going. Forward. 
Okay, those iron drakes are gone if we win the battle. It's fine, focus on the longbeards. Healing going, nice and steady. I am My orders uh, so we'll get the Necro Sphinx to work on their work on their big their lord, um, since he's on a large platform. The rest of you kill their Iron Breakers, please. Chasing my Lich Priest. Want to be a little careful about that because their flag bearer is being a little misleading as to their position. Okay, you all focus on their lord. Broken the other units. Fine, that's fine. Everyone sit in heal range. I am reborn. Yes. Pretty much good. Uh, one final heal off, and I uh, think we're pretty much at full strength. Now we have other dwarf armies to take care It is a shame I lost uh, experience to him, Scorpion's last session's battle. Especially since I don't know that I'll have the time to re-recruit them. There are just so many dwarf armies, I'm hopping from engagement to engagement with no downtime. I alone shall restore the Hekai. You alone, huh? As if there weren't three other dudes with you in that battle. Oh, Ranger Standard isn't terrible. Talisman of Protection, fine. Although... Zorandis have something yet? Because he... The day of awakening comes. If he doesn't, he need. Okay, Talisman of Endurance, yeah. It's fine, it's fine. Temporary Tomb Princes, Leadership Boosts, fine. Can I picture, uh, yeah, you, you, you have a lot of bonuses, it's fine. Victory in undeath, Priest King of Greatest Dynasty, address me as your highness. Can we kill the sun? Yes, I think we can. Power in unlife. Um, uh, more casualty replenishment rate. Now what I'm probably gonna do... Yeah, Thutep can hit that army. In uh, cause I probably can't have all the armies hit both the settlement and that one stray army at the same time. Find my 
so I'll probably have Thu Tep and this other support army hit this dwarf army to wipe it out. Could be fine to auto resolve. More damage than I would have liked, but not to any of the key units. Unleash these slaves. And if I can, I'll force march them back into friendly territory next turn. And as for Arandis, cr crush the. G oh, dang it. I right clicked on the army instead of the settlement. I should have hit the settlements, so that way the army couldn't have retreated. Oh well. To war for Nehikara! Okay, sack that for now. The realm of souls fills with my foes. And what I'll do is I'll move that back to friendly territory. And I can have Thutep and the other army spawn to the northern territory next turn. More casualty replenishment here. Okay, yes. <laughs> back into friendly territory, for replenishment. And Arandis can actually recruit, they can make use of the local capacity, and they will take him out of action until the turn after next, but hopefully that will work out. Ayashers is recruiting. Hyro Titan and Sky Samudis moving into backup position. And can I rotate in a fresh lord? Yep, there we go, tactician. Not really a useful trait, but fine. There for Canopic Char Hoarder. And I don't really need to take Tra. Are there any other faction wide bonuses? Not really, okay. for local combat. And I think I will rotate this guy as well. My dynasty reigns supreme. Yes, yes, your dynasty runes reign supreme. Absolutely. So more casualty replenishment rate would be wonderful. Dutep has a level, go ahead and up your replenishment. Um priest light. Put everything up there, replenishment. Okay, you can get her thing now. Uh Thutep can't recruit this turn. Right! Uh, to your king. This guy had Hyro Titan bonuses. I don't think I uh, particularly. It's a bit awkward finding someone to command everything, but it's fine. I guess you're headed north? Was there a dwarf army down here? I think I was concerned. Did I, did I take out the dwarf army down here? 
I think I may have taken out the dwarf army down there. If memory serves. I have been when I was sending people up north. Um. Okay, not really many recruit options there. Not many recruit options here either. Fine. And it's just this Tomb Prince who doesn't need the points allocated. Okay, construction options. You're still growing. You're building up to tier 5. I'll need money to work on that shortly. Uh, no need to bother waiting for... Waiting for Thutep to get down here, I think. Let's just get the key stuff built. stuff here. Ideally I want all three of those buildings. Uh, okay, I already have the bone giant building built. So what am I pulling down? I guess the small income building? Oh, that's my only income building. Yeah, okay, I'm pulling that down to make room for military buildings for now. War Sphinx. Necro Sphinx. It's getting that stuff built. That's just ports, we can deprioritize those. I'll need the mo more tier 5 money next turn. Uh, I don't think I can afford to buy more army capacity just yet. Okay, Citra is going to be where I put most of my Tum Princes, and Thutep most of my Necrotechs, although each army needs at least a Necrotech and a Lich Priest for each main army. My sporting armies, I may leave the heroes out. That's a sporting army, and that's a sporting army. Alright. Onward we go. Oh, yeah, Tyrion's still at war with me. It's a fun session, so. Water Tide is quite the muster at the moment. I wonder how long it'll be until Reichland joins the war. Hinder Replenishment, okay, that's not the worst. Assault Garrison, fine. Okay, that gets rid of one of them for a little bit. And Grumbrindle's going that way. And Bjornling's dead. Although the Warriors of Chaos have plenty of strength left, at least. Let's see how quickly they squander it. Despite this being on legendary strength, I have my doubts that the Warriors of Chaos will achieve anything but feeding the Order Tide. Mission to occupy Galbaraz failed. It's unfortunate, but not unsurprising. I am king. Do you know who I am? Now, Grombrindle's army. Unliving curse. 
Sport Rangers. No, I'm not gonna be able to engage Grom Brindle this turn. I am going to flatten Gorga's arm though. That that army's reinforced rate got replenishment rate got zeroed. It's bothersome. Okay, let's do hero movements first, get a bit of intelligence before I forget that's a thing. Is that a... no, that's not a... Uh... Okay, you're not really gonna push anything there. Just head north here. Self there. More dwarf armies marching down and recruiting. Open the casket of souls. This way, the dead say. Okay, so far nothing new coming from there. I'm just gonna dismiss one of the necrotects here. Um. I keep my own No, nobody. Worth keeping just at the moment. Oh, Necrotechs haven't rotated. Right, I'll leave that as is then. My Cetra is ready to roll out. He does not impress me. With apparently Cetra is unimpressed by his Lich Priest. Which is very rude. Considering the amount of work his Lich Priest has done relative to Cetra himself. We use Citra's army up north here. Does Citra have Taskmaster? Yes, he does. King of all I survey. Emotion. March up there. What? Cinnatip sit and reinforce rain. My demand. Two king. Hit Gorgazan. Nehikara will be mine. Should be fine. Destroy Raise it. No Destroy it. Okay, Thutep's army is there. The supporting army in ambush starts. Though I suspect from Brindle. Will win if he attacks now. But hopefully he it'll actually respect the uh the coastline values and Grumbrindle won't be able to just come up and attack. Come raiding public order. Uh, out of those I may as well take Canopic Chars. Okay, this priest could probably take shims. This guy, yeah, he's cavalry master, that's why I left him on a horse. <laughs> Navillian wants to adopt a scorpion and name them Gordon. Thank you for the redeem. Navillian, I guess I'll pick one of my most experienced scorpions. Pick the one on the left here so it's easier to keep track of. There we go, Gordon has been officially entitled. Thank you, Navillian. I will endeavor not to lose that scorpion, although they are very good at getting in trouble. Victory, yes. <laughs> Tomb 
Do what I can. Also, Black Pyramid of the Gash looking. That's stabilizing. Is my throne ready? Greatness comes. My ashes are still Submit. recruiting. Sky is in a camp. Recruiting, recruiting. Can I? No, I'm. I don't have any. Uh. I can't put Richmond of Renown into Thutip's army. At the very least, these aren't critical armies if I do end up losing them. Right, more construction. I'll hake just to get key buildings online. Including a port. I do still need those walls, but you've got the Bone Giant building and the Scorpion building. I guess I've got to pull down the Money building. War Sphinx. Necro Sphinx. Dang it, there's a Salt building as well. And I think the Ushabti Great Bow is, is very important there, so I can't just... drop that. Okay, here. Hyrule Titan, let's go. The assassins. Land of the Dead. Yeah, we're fine. As far as that's concerned, at least. Should I deploy an Ecrotect? Uh, colonize to protect. I'd rather let the dwarves colonize us if it comes to it. Although they will probably prioritize attacking me. Yes. I am the High King. I will hear you back now. You gonna peace out with me? No, you are not. Up. Ah, more High Elves as well, showing up to the party. Really? That instantly? Accident! Encountered Exiles of Nehek. United against us, Exiles of Nehek. Okay, so Grombundle was able to land. It's not great. I will try and fight a defensive battle here. Um, I'll do what I can. I have my doubts as to what I can actually accomplish, though. Oh, this guy's not actually on a Necro Sphinx. Oh, oh no, on a War Sphinx. Okay. We'll see what damage I can inflict. probably need to do is hide much of the army and then dance around with uh dance around with fast units for a bit but I don't know how much I can realistically do especially with their artillery support as a factor Ok, 
Okay, let's get stuff in and organized. Don't, it seems I don't have a good hill to hide the monsters behind. And they are gonna come in offensively, okay. Wait in here, come on. Try and keep the monsters hidden if I can too. Let's see what I can do with magic here. Surely, okay. them some damage. Don't think I successfully hit the monsters. We'll see. Sepultra Majesty! Nah, no luck.
That's way too close to the organ guns. Can I still... I'm still not in cast range, damn it. That's way too close, should not have done that. We'll try and put the infantry to use. Please go kill these organ guns. Have these units try and punch through here. to the rangers. Don't want to be stuck in there. Kill the organ guns. Kill the organ guns. What why am I why did I not select to kill the organ guns? You move. Pull through. And move. Brothers, slaves. Go. We march. Good. Curse them all. Moving. Move, slaves. Um, la fa. Apparently not. Go, 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 kill these organ guns. Try and get out the other way then. Oh, I see why you're having so much trouble. You're on a horse. They are terrible mounts. Okay. Infantry! Line up! Formation! Archers, just take up what positions you've got, start firing. Okay. 
king! Folks pull through, get reorganized. Will. And deal with these units over here, harassing the archers. Sharp T go bonk on their rangers. Archers get organized, get firing. Stay on those hammers. Get into firing positions. Use your speed, navigate round. Don't tangle with their lord if you can avoid it. Engage those rangers. Force those rangers to stay in melee with us, thank you. All those rangers. All archers. Uh well these archers over here rather. Turn around, get firing. You collapse in on those iron breakers, give them some trouble so our other units can keep firing. 
Lich priests lead their lord away. Iron breakers, the other unit can keep firing. We are that Bucklands Rangers unit. Keep running. Uh, can those- I don't think those Iron Breakers can outrun my archers. Okay, come on, collapse it and clean up some of these units, especially the Slayers. Archers without ammo, screen for the archers that still have ammo. Keep the healing. <laughs> Is that army losses? Oh yeah, Grom Brindle's unbreakable, that's army losses. Oh yeah, let's kill Grom Brindle. Actually, archers hold fire. Go ahead and net Grom, well, that might make it a bit easier. the archers together in heal range. You might be able to save some of them. Come on. Okay, my heal's not ready yet. Come on, heal, heal, heal. I don't- although this heal can't resurrect units, so I don't think it's any saving that archer unit. <laughs> okay, back- back the archers away. I don't want them fighting Grumbrindle. Rest of our guys fighting for the door. Agreed. Ah, Tomb Prince have been doing a lot of work apparently. Get their melee attack up. Should be enough to overwhelm Grumbrindle's defenses. There we go. Orders. Get people reorganized for some heals.
some dwarf units are probably still fl no okay look we won in a battle i'd rather not have fought we did kill grom brindles up i'll take it actually we still have to run down some of the rest of the army by the look of it not that much of it though because dwarves pretty much fight to the death Okay, with that battle fought, I'm going to take a bit of a break here, drink some coffee, stretch, all that good stuff. You folks do take care of yourselves as well. Hydrate, stretch, grab some food if you need to. You are absolutely worth it. I'll see you in 5 to 10 minutes. And we're back. Thanks for sticking around, folks. Hope you're all having a relatively pleasant time of day. It's time to get back into things after this uh, absolutely catastrophic battle for both sides. Although the dwarfs did lose a lot more important stuff than I did. I managed to keep my important stuff intact. That said, this is legendary difficulty, the dwarfs are just going to print a few more stacks like this over the next couple of turns. So, the battle continues, but at least made it through. And that's the general trend I'm hoping to maintain, is winning battles and quickly rebuilding armies, rather than losing battles and quickly rebuilding armies. It's unfortunate though that Grom Brindle's defeat trait isn't very useful. <laughs> And there's an army coming from the east. Okay then. Being at war with the exiles from the heck, come to think of it, isn't that huge a deal because they can't, like, I can't confederate with them, so their territory doesn't mean anything to me. But that's still just another enemy on a pile of many, many enemies. And I'm not keeping up with it that fact. Okay, I do have new lords to rotate in, so that's good. Rotate in a new lord to this army. Uh, I don't think too much of my stuff got hidden. Okay, that guy's closing on Hemry, which is especially concerning. Are there dwarf territories to the east that have been taken? Let's see, is Karag or right, no, those are still last defenders. So I think they must have come in from the north and then headed down south into uh into uh Gemri. Is this guy a uh throwaway? Let's see. Prince Asashen. Son of Nehikara! Yeah, I think so. He got wounded at one point. It reminds me to... It came to my attention, I think, that two of my lich priests have the same name. Um, one, I think they may both have been wounded, however. Oh, wait, no, no. This is Hakoros here, and Thutep has Hakoros here. So we'll rename one of them. Heck or mighty, yes. There we go. <laughs> Fix us the duplication. Hopefully. Right, now to organize the mess that is my lords and heroes list. Address me as your highness. This guy needs to be cycled out. Master of Ceremony, fine. Magic, Canopic Jar Hoarder. Get you up to Resurrect. King of all 
probably should maintain a Necrotect in this area to see when the Dwarfs are sending armies down. Can I search the ruins here? Okay, this should be solvable. Yeah, I think it's this one. Ooh, that's actually really, really useful armor. Let me put it on someone before I forget. Etc. And he actually has it. Okay. Blue tip. And ashes. I guess I'll put it on. I'll put it on Cetra and then swap some better armor onto Blue tip. As well. That'll have to do for now. Get to princes. This is the guy. Try and assess the composition of this elven army that's sailing towards us. Phoenix guard, archers, summon dragons. Should be manageable, although a lot of those are high uh, are high tier units and are a respectable threat. Oh, and we've got more dwarfs headed this way. Dang. Clear the sprints. And... Okay, we're still waiting for new princes to cycle in. Um... Necrotect. No good traits still. So be it. Gonna have this person... Stand by to defend Kemri. What am I seeing? Flame cannons, rangers, elite units in general. We'll put Thutep here. Have the sky pick up relevant traits. And we'll finish off this army. Going to fight it manually so I can replenish those war sphinxes. And then have Thutip march back down into friendly territory. Well, hopefully just walk and not march. Transfer through tip back into friendly territory. It's the idea, at least. Let's see if we can't get a bit better magic. No, no, game just hates me today. <laughs> ah, all right. Hopefully those dwarfs don't get too aggressive, and that'll and we have some time to replenish. But it's by no means guaranteed. Zion of Nehekara. So be it. Let's get in place. Carry on, Lord. Come on. Chop chop. There we go. Healing start. It looks like they are going to come at us. You could sand veil at them, but... Oh, I actually do get the sand veil army from the supporting army. Interesting. I assume that wasn't the case, but... Hmm. You do get the supporting army's army abilities, it seems. Are going to be coming at us. Can we back up a little bit? Take some time for the cooldowns to come back anyway.
probably gonna have to be enough. Iron Breakers with a banishment. Too slow on my casting. Who came? The Fulcrum Majesty. My will be done. We march for Nehekara. I am reborn. This is well. Fight. Let's get this done. Breakers are leaving, then focus on their lord. I obey. And there's um their army's dead. Hold all orders. Let's get as much replenishment in as we can. Okay, I think we're good. Gets that army out of the way. Minimal to no casualties. That's what we're looking for. And because uh, the supporting army was the one making the attack, they're the ones that burned their movement, meaning Thutep should have more movement to get back into friendly territory. Even as more dwarfs close in from that direction. I'll take the potion of speed off the Temp Lord before I forget. Do the dwarves want to be at peace? No. Come on. I mean, it's going to be practically impossible to peace out with them, but still. Okay. Force march, the supporting army down here. They've been hit with hinder replenishment, so they're not going to be able to replenish. Unfortunately. Okay, Thutep, I think, is going to be able to move to about here. Yeah, Ayashas move uh, down that way as far as possible. Thutep, you've got a few extra units to pick up from Ayashas. Um, pull the War Sphinx and the Hyro Titan. 
when I'm ready. The Vtep isn't specifically specced out for the Hyro Titan. It fits the configuration of his army, kind of. The Hyro Titan's a lot slower, though. They'd be an anvil. In any of the setups, and they might honestly go down a little too easily because they can't, especially to dwarf armies, because they can't get clear of the dwarfs. Fire, but it's muscle. You know what? Having thought about that, I'm actually, I'm actually probably going to end up putting it in a, putting it in Ayesha's eye. Do I have more recruit turns here, though? Yes, I can pull in a couple more War Sphinxes. I will do that. Ayashes. If I put you in Force March, we can swap the Hyro Titan off through Tap again. And this guy... We can, we can leave the, those configured as is. Victory in death. Priest King of Greatest Okay. Arantes is ready for business again. My father demands it. I rotated Necrotechs and stuff. Yes, I have. Okay. Priest King of Greatest Well, I might have him try and ambush this dwarf army up here. Onward, soldiers. It's one of the few armies right now that should be comfortable operating solo. Um, and he could use the ambusher trait. Have a practice with that. I alone shall restore Nehekara. How am I going to arrange the remaining armies with movement? My Let's see. Petra, how far can you move and still get in ambush? Starts that far. Stop that. I have risen. Legions, move. Okay. Put you in ambush there. Petra. It's defending Camry. Gonna put him in Force March next to it. See if that helps with bait. But I have my doubts. Priest King! Tomb King of Mehikara! And then I'm gonna have this guy. Can I get no you can't get in range. Uh did I need to rotate another lord? I think I did. Let's see if I've got more in the pool. No, not this turn. I think I actually remembered to. Summon them. Now we're gonna transfer one of the Tomigard to Ayesha's army. Make way. So he can barely utilize them. King of Tombs. I'm gonna swap. To yeah, actually, I'm gonna swap all our units with the. Uh, or, or well, swap five units with the uh, army that has a hint of replenishment. That way, these units can actually replenish. Because the end replenishment state is tied to the army, not the individual unit. Submit to your king. And finally, My I'll just have this guy stand by for now, because he doesn't have a whole lot of recruitment options in here. Attend. But he could perhaps move up. Camry as well. Yeah, you can get, get pretty close. That'll let him do recruitment stuff. 
as well as potentially act as bait. Okay, construction. Higher Titan. I want Great Bow Ushabtis more than I want. I want Great Bow Ushabti more than I want Higher Titans. Dead, that's fine. Hopefully I'll have more recruitment caps soon. I'll have another casket of souls in eight turns. I'm just gonna poke this for the ambush success chance. Because I probably kind of need it. To throw away prints. Uh, oh, this tomb, temporary tomb prints can use some. Points allocated, fine. And. Chorus, the Lich Priest. Fast protection. Okay. High Elves are sailing this way. That's just lovely. Don't know if a single scorpion stack will be able to handle everything just yet. And well, this guy took the bait, including Cetra's units, settlement garrison. Let me just double check the casualties. Looks like we'll be good. Yeah, no sweat. Cetra's army is even basically perfectly intact. Let the living live. Stop wounding my references. Potion of full hardiness on that guy is fine. Lost another temporary tomb prints. More than ready for duty. Have a lot of heroes out of action, which is very annoying. This Necrotech spot any more armies coming that way. Not especially. Uh, the the dwarves are still not busy enough to peace out. Scout this ocean briefly. Doesn't look like there's anything Call coming me. down that way. Onwards, legions. Scout these army positions. No it's gonna be a significant person. test of the uh, scorpion stack once again, but hopefully Gordon will prevail. My lords and heroes list is getting longer and longer. Okay. Yes, new chariot master. That is going into Cetra's army. Are you going to adopt this one as speed wagon the second? Okay, carry it on. Uh, power is it? Yeah, combat stats. Missile resistance, it points combat stats. 
uh, do any of these. No, okay, melee defense here. Melee attack and weapon strength to one strike. Speed and hit points. A bit of armor. Does it strike? All the combat stats except for leadership. I could, I, I could have just filled this all in because I recruit these people at almost max rank. Uh, spread public order, sure. Training's not really useful. Uh, Canopic Jar Hoarder. And uh, Assassinate, I guess. Let's get you some items. Mortuary robes will do. Uh, PSN weapon damage, sure. Some ward save. You can't cause terror or it, can you? So this is actually not a terrible mask for you to wear. Okay, so Cetra... I need to remember to have him stand by here to pick up his, uh... His dude. Gonna have him ambush here then. And how about Necrotects? Anything useful in that pool? No, but I need to rotate one out. My I'll rotate out the guy on the ocean here. But not rename him. Dismiss. One up. I need more! Doo -doo -doo. Right, now, to actually I move armies. It. Gonna be a bit tricky to move out offensively. Gonna have to do it sooner or later. I fully expect the lizard men to declare war on me again soon as well. But yeah, so actually I'm probably gonna have to maintain one force to the west. And then have one force pushing up through Death Gorge here. I'm gonna have to trespass through Lizard Men territory and then double back when they declare war on me. So I guess I'll have set for leading one push. Speaking of Cetra. Uh, right, we weren't, probably weren't going to fill out your campaign movement range, because you do max it out. Good blade, uh, that, that seems fine. Do I still have a... Oh, right. I need to, I need, I, I still have a, I still have a quest to do with Cetra, but I... There's no one who likes me enough to trade that has those resources right now. Uh, Dune Kingdoms have no trade goods. The Boss of Dread has one of the trade goods I need for that. Corone has some of them, but g good luck befriending Corone. You do not walk my lands without my blessing. Which you don't have! No. He does not like me, funnily enough. The dwarves probably have the resources I need. <laughs> Kirby music! Woo! You gonna uh, adopt my, my second elite Tomb Prince, incidentally, Navili? Oh yeah, I can ha actually have this guy pick up the, uh, the Hyro Titan from this army. There we go. So he'll actually give him benefits. Um, I guess you could, as long as I can rename the Lord, and I, I haven't already near them something specific, you could, but Tomb Princes are, are heroes, which I'm... also as long as I can rename them. 
happy for you to do so. Okay, I'll swing by this uh, place and I guess I'll add some uh, add some ogres to the list. And I'll stand by here, Cetra is gonna lead the charge to the west. And Ayashas can provide the main bulk of our uh, range support for that. Though he has no movement range left. Okay, Lutep is still recruiting. Any more Necro Sphinx capacity? No. <laughs> Basically. I mean, what is even good to pad out a, uh, a War Sphinx army like this? It might honestly just have to be a Sharp D. I'll, I'll throw some into Thutep's army for now. We must rebuild our legions. Although, he doesn't give the Sharp T bonuses, does he? No, no, the Sharp T are better off in another stack then. We must rebuild our legions. I'll just throw some arbitrary skeletons into the stack. Oh well, let's let's recruit with the other things here and, and then I can add out and put in the padding skeletons. Okay. This ambush did not uh succeed in pulling them in. I can't strike the elves right now. So Arande is the treacherous. Gonna have to clear out that dwarf army. Uh, let's review the other armies before we jump into an engagement. Cetra has levels. Um, what was I going to do for him? Into Arcane Conduit. Okay, he, he's five points less, left to spend total. He doesn't need to take Tra the Great Father. Not Chariot of the Gods, so I think I was going to... 10% fizz resistant. Uh, speed and charge bonus. It's helpful. It might be more helpful over. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to do one. And then. Uh, two. Three. Four. Because I can't get him to Desert Strike, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that would take more points than I have available at the moment. Although, one, two, three, four. So I'm, that, that could work. Five. I would get him 10, 8 melee attack, weapons 10, weapon strength. How is his resist? How is his resist? Magic resist, missile, fizz. I, I, I think the, I think the resists would be more useful than the melee attack at this point. Etc. So let's go for that. Uh, well, let's get his army speed and charge bonus first. Speed wagon the first. Um, working on his melee attack. This temporary necrotect. Loyal, as all should be. Get some indomitable will. Nehekara rises from the sands. Can I move you to a different province to leverage its recruitment? No, not at the moment. I shall make him proud. Um, in that case, you may as well park in Zandri and recruit. Maybe. Let's review Kura. Yeah, Kura, you can move. You can probably. Well, let's ro rotate Lords before I forget as well. That's something I need to do. 
Uh, yeah, just rotate this guy in. Do picture hoarder. Okay, just roll up here as support fodder. And I think that's all my important army movements. Uh, this guy could use some more archers. And some more Tomb Guard, I guess. Here we go. Do 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 do. Archer. Filling out with whatever's available. I could, I could push army capacity here for even more stacks of uh, skeletons. I don't know that that would. I guess it, it could help with power projection. But aside from that, I don't know if it would have any significant benefit. Okay, Arandis. Let's get to work. Can you attack in channeling stance? No, I don't think so. Nope, regular stance and go. Want to minimize the damage these scorpions take, so we'll fight this manually. Take a moment to stop the sun from blinding me in real life. Magic, please. No, okay. We want to close distance fast and just jump in them. Let's see, Thunderers and Quarrelers. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I'm gonna rush them down. Let the reinforcements just come in as is. And we'll drop some magic on top of them once stuff goes in. Okay, go! Go, go, go. Kill those thunderers. Split some of them off to engage the rangers with great weapons. Okay, we're now a little too spread out. Consolidate back together on the rangers with great weapons. Pull the witch beast out of firing range. Okay, come on. Stay together, folks. Gordon's doing fine, at least. Ah, the scorpion at the edge. Come on, get out, get out. Okay, we need you folks to pull together. Reborn. 
magic getting dropped in. Can you pull out a range there? Making use of our Lord's ability because he's managed to tank so much damage. Push through to their Thunderers if you can, although I suspect some of you will get left behind. Collapse back in on these long beards. We need to get all together for a heal. I think that's the army loss penalty. Okay, where are their slayers? Focus in on the slayers. Healing, go. Good, we're all in range. Magic. See if these units can catch some of their other ones, but I doubt we're fast enough. My orders, unliving king. Come on, wipe out those slayers. Good. Uh. Thunderers, Warriors, Dragonfire, Pass, if they're ranged units, may as well head that way, though. Long be it, Quarrelers will do. Faster. Go get him. Still took a bunch of damage, but it's manageable at least. Gordon being one of the finest Tomb Scorpions there with 50 kills. stack does need a bit more muscle. Although to be fair, I did charge them straight into a dwarf army. Without too much uh, tactical breakdown beforehand. I alone shall restore Pekar. Let the living live. Ooh. Oh, if that went to King Cenotep. Um, I'll pull it off him before I forget. Uh, there's some fizz resistance, at, at least if it proves necessary. Arise, legions. What can I do here? Replenishment rate, and... Replenishment rate. Not that that helps this army 
too much in its present state. Okay, I can still ambush in the army's current position, so I'm gonna do that in case the elves wander up and attack the uh, force marching army. I think that's all movements for this turn sorted. Uh, this is a temporary Tomb Prince. Victory, yes! <laughs> That's fine. And this other... Yeah. My leech is okay, there where they went through construction options. Um, although... I think it is time. I can actually just start upgrading ports. I have the money to now. Going over there. Tip is still recruiting. Take me to my sarcophagus. Raise or sack Galvaraz. Uh, so when else is ready? Ooh, Lich Priest came back. Temporary Tomb Prince came back. Okay, both of these are... Thutep's army, right? Yeah. Advance them, them over right away. I serve King and Batia. This is where... Land of the Dead. Get that leadership bonus. Do I have any more Sphinx capacity that's come online? No, although I have got a new Sharpty Great Bow capacity. Okay, Cetra. Just smoke these skeletons. Let's break that much down, it's okay. Uh, some more of these skeletons. Okay, you are going to take two of these Tomb Guard units. Uh, you can onboard this prince. And before I move Cetra out, I should check that there's no one else that needs to... Ooh, yes, a Scorpion Carver! Okay, Cetra... As, uh, as gonna have a... Well, actually, that's gonna be Arandi's... Arandi's Necrotect. <laughs> Cetra's not gonna have a Necrotect yet. Boy, them from Zandri. Take a look up here. No dwarf armies coming there just yet. No other elven armies in the vision just yet. Prince is done. Okay. Are there other princes to cycle in this turn? Yes, so I may as well just leave this one. Let's begin. Father, I command! 
let's just life there and one necrotect. I think only my second permanent necrotect ever. Uh, any, not really any defensive bonuses, but fine. Take a Berserker Sword. Physical Resistance, sure. Other Trixes, Shard, Thor, I guess. He might be engaging stuff with magical vulnerabilities. Mobility, get store. Mainly it get these bonuses for surrounding units and Arundis wanna come down and pick that guy up. Such ugly ails. Such <laughs> Okay, that was a that was a Tom King line. Such ugly elves. Fair enough. Um rotate this guy out. Not a very useful trait, but so be it. I just need I'm pushing the canopic jar production. At this point I can just print army capacity if I really wanted to. Well, aside from the actual money requirements, I suppose. But I don't have that many weapon, like good weapons I can make either. Like, uh, which ones would I want to mass produce? Probably the double crescent of Nehru. Five melee attack and defense. Or blade of morning fire, but flaming attacks are a significant disadvantage in many cases. Uh, armor. Armor of Dawn's Wood Save looks really good. Oh, oh right, I can get them regen. So yeah, there are some good things I'd, I'd want to look for. It make them even more vulnerable to... Fire, uh, to fire. Although... Ouroboros also looks pretty good. And then I can uh, go with, uh, say, Armor of Dawn for the ward save. At any rate, I'm gonna need more, more trade goods before I can really take advantage of that. You know what? I am actually going to print more army capacity. And when I have so much army capacity that I don't have the canopic jars to get more, then I'll consider getting items for now. They're mobilizing another army, doing it out of Al Haik, Tom Kings. I'll have to pull from my stock. There we go, we've got another disciplined Tom King. Vanguard for Skeleton Chariot, not very useful. Sure, go get a Sword of Might. Potion of Speed. Okay, so you were going to be a... Just a, a Scorpion slash Sphinx guy. I'm probably going to adjust that to a... The, the, these guys to Scorpion Hierotitan? Or Shabti? I'm, I'm not sure. So I, I, uh... In fact, maybe maybe I'll throw Shabti out here. Ah, uh, not yet though. Archers! Oh, and I can global efficiently, right? More archers. And we're at Tomb Guard capacity, so skeletons! Land of the dead. 
Right. Around these, around these. How far can I move and still do ambush stats? Right here. Yeah. I'm a little concerned because this, this is a very mean looking army still. Well, if I colonize this, I can get replenishment. I would eat too much of that army to be worth it, I think. Is Thutep still recruiting? Yes, he is. Okay, I'm gonna have some tick hang around with Thutep. And Ayashas can go roll out with Cetra. Oh yeah, etc. You can pull in another Mishabti Great Bow unit, can't you? There we go. The sleep falls upon me. Summon them. Some tick hold an ambush. On my command. My glory. Power in unlife. Go ahead and ambush there as well. Uh, I'm gonna need one more army to make a group of four to the east. Uh, so I'll figure that out at some point. I'll have to juggle a few people back and forth. Cetra has to recruit for one more turn, so I'll have the time. Oh, okay, we've got this to tier five as well. I can pull these down. Uh, I can potentially expect company uh, all along the coastline, so I should build walls at those settlements. Pull these down as well. I've got bone giants, but I will also need uh, one, two, three, four, and bone giant. Yeah, I think I'll have room to keep the money building in there. Be good. I will be done. Anyone else need to move? I think we're okay for now. You're a temporary Tomb Prince. Have I cycled Necrotech's Tomb Prince? Yes, I have. Okay. Oh, I'll have more army capacity in a turn, too. So that, that kind of works out. They wound my ego. Like, that means I kind of regret spending money. I realize I, I might not have enough to get the uh, military buildings up immediately. Also, I still have an army hit coming in. Also, how did Kolak get dead? Dwarfs, can we please chill? What if I joined war against all of your enemies? And paid you a lot of money? Nope. No, okay. <laughs> Bye. Ah, Book of Grudges remains full. Let's roll. Okay, that guy is on land. Should be able to pincer in and kill him. Last defenders mobilizing another slan. I may be the only Tom King's faction left in the game with actual force. That's a dicey proposition at that. Fucking hell. 
There goes Cetra's Lich Priest for another four turns. <laughs> I need to pull in some temporary Tomb Princes just to run around assassinating people at this point. The Wood Elves are partying up. Uh, diplomatic relations minus 10 with all factions is not a huge penalty. I have more army capacity. This is another throwaway Necrotech. Let's come back. I'm free. Throwaway Tomb King. I don't have the room to mobilize additional Lich Priests right now. Can I transfer them? Adaya. Okay. Adaya is probably transferring to Cetra's army, unless I can figure out an alternative solution. But before that, let's let's roll our roll our heroes around and get what intel I can. Okay. There's no army sitting in Death Gorge at the moment. That's commanded by a high arc mage. Don't see any dwarf armies sailing down south yet. The sky is for Aratnes. Address me as your highness. Uh, we'll juggle that, that the hero positioning in just a little bit. This guy is uh, largely throwaway, but I'll get him assassinated specialist. Anyway, is there... Okay, we need to rotate them out though, so... Uh, what can I do here? Assault they units! No, no, no luck. Goodbye. We'll rotate someone out here, and hopefully he can stab that annoying a prick of a hostile hero that's causing trouble here. And Necrotects, I need to rotate those as well. We must rebuild our legions. Uh, so I do need to dismiss this guy. And I will pull in a Necrotect here. The greatest artist. Just hit boost income and cannot pick Jar Horda for the turn you're up. Okay, actual army movements. Let's go. Four armies for this side of things. It's gonna be Arandis, it's the main. Lutep. Cenotep supporting. And I guess dropped. didn't want to fight. Now, we can embed this Necrotect into Arandi's army with easing up at least little movement as possible. Arandis, okay, Arandis can make the attack most directly. Cenotep. Attack 
and destroy. Oh, we may as well poke the uh, ogre place here, although I doubt I'll ever have the money to actually use them. I didn't mean to make the attack there. I meant to sit them next to it. Annoying. But he should still be in reinforced range. So the uh, objective should still be achieved. Okay. Randis, make the attack. And it says I'm going to lose Film Scorpions. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do here, although it's gonna be far from off, is I'm gonna let the. Because I don't want to manage an engagement of this scale, I'm going to let the AI control. Because I need to control the infantry. In fact, that's actually going to be advantageous because to me, to an extent, because it's going to let me field all my units at once, I believe, rather than having to pull back units to fill, fill in my own. And I don't care about these units or heroes. So if the even if the air does poorly with them, I just want them to front line and let me work. That should give me room to consolidate things with the actual core force. And uh need to remember to keep this Necrotech back and safe. It's not not here to fight this battle. Let's do this. Gordon had better make it through this. <laughs> I do have considerably more War Sphinxes and Scorpions than I have had at any previous engagement to bring to bear, so there is that. Said they do have Arcane Phoenixes, which are incredibly deadly. Phoenix Guard and a lot of Elven Archers. Okay. Scorpions, let's drag you in groups of five. That's about the radius of a heel. Two. Yep, yeah, that puts you all in heel radius. Almost. Okay, one. You are a caster. And you. You. Stay safe. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have him immediately pop down his restore ability. Yeah, okay. This way, all of my troops can deploy at once, at least. I just hope I can do better than Order Resolve, because this campaign has significantly dented my self-confidence as Twin Kings, I will say. In case it wasn't evident already. <laughs> uh, right. Tomb Prince Frontliners, in position. Tomb King. Actually, you're at number four. Number three. Get it there. Priest. Priest. Heal boys. Or Arcane Conduit boys. War Sphinxes, get into position. You pop your heal. 18 seconds. The next Necrotect heal. Okay, static high elves are a good thing. If my computer ally doesn't provoke the high elves into attacking, we will have time to heal up to full. Tomb King. 
And in fact, in that case, I'm going to hold the Necrotech second heal. Because that's limited use, unlike the unlimited use uh, Tomb King heal. Uh, I'm going to hold the Necrotech second heal until it's really needed. Feel free to ask away, Navillion. I mean, this is a whole, a whole lot of the best infantry the Tomb Kings have to offer that's being fielded right now as fodder. <laughs> ah, you're asking about my uh, earlier discussion about uh, about uh, uh, fun nightmares. Well, there were some giant spiders involved. For the most part, they were kind of regular-sized spiders and ants and I was regular size. It was just incredibly disturbing. <laughs> okay, looks like my ally has decided they are in position. And... <laughs> we deploy. So... Necrotect, pop down your second heal. And pull back. The rest of you... We're moving up to engage. It's basically... Some... I, I, I guess I probably shouldn't... Uh, I, I wouldn't be comfortable repeating the, uh, the body horror stuff that was involved in in uh, said nightmares or mares over here I, I think it would be a, a little off-putting it was not a good time okay what can I do here hopefully I can do some damage to these archer units with a legionary barrage let's go for it Despite the intimidating nature of many of their units, legit their legit most dangerous stuff is the uh, is the uh, the archers by a long shot, which is why it is kind of annoying that their uh, computer ally is putting the infantry first, the the our own archers first, rather than letting our silver shields soak. I do need the support of the fodder in order to win this, so I shouldn't just let them die. But I'm still a little wary of engaging right now. Come on, cast, 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 cast. And leave. into position as well. Starting to wander up. At least these guys are buying us, my, my allies are buying us time to heal, so maybe it's not the worst thing to, to let them engage like this. Fire! That's an extremely poor archer deployment they have there, though. Okay, let's go, let's go. They're in trouble. Try and kill that arcane phoenix. Actually, we are being... Engagement's being switched. Kill that e kill that guy. Kill the hero. The hero is a high value. Black 
also don't let our Lich Beast be pinned down by their cavalry. And, ah, hell. Okay, everyone redirect. Our Lich Beast needs help. Net that cavalry. Clear out some of these archers. It's the last legionary barrage. Wipe out those dragon princes. Evasive! Okay, Necro Sphinx, kill that guy. You, random scorpion, get on him as well. Okay, kill their lord while he's netted. Kill those Phoenix Guard. Phoenix so it can't get away. Reinforce our attack order on the Phoenix. Oh, this is uh, hopefully a good banishment target. Go, go, go. Our magic flowing again. Greetings to Misanthrope in the chat. Thank you for the salute. Uh, I mean, hopefully the Phoenix is dead. They have an uh, annoying tendency to not die. They vex me. I I love this tendency when I am commanding them, but it, it can be a problem. Okay, that was a good banishment cast, I think. Seems to have worked out. And we have a victory! Excellent. Okay, let's wipe out as many of their core units as possible, I guess. That was Continues to be a painfully awkward quantity of skeletons, like a performance tanking quantity of skeletons on the field, but it seems to have worked. <laughs> I am doing reasonably okay today, Misanthrope. I'd be better if there were fewer dwarfs burying me in this campaign, but is what it is. I hope you're doing well yourself. Ah, right, hang on. 
Right, this is the second engagement they've been in, so they are wiped out. I, I, I don't need to chase them down. I can focus on healing. It's good. Let's get as close to full strength as we can manage. Gonna redirect the camera so it focuses on as few of the uh, the giant stacks of skeletons as possible. <laughs> to be fair, it's reminding me why I love playing dwarf so much. I am a dwarf's man at heart. But uh we are a painful people to fight, I suppose. <laughs> it is good to see you. Glad to hear you are doing well. Doing okay, at least. Okay, what's fleeing? Okay, fine. Still have some time to heal. Can probably squeeze a couple more in. Okay, close victory, but I didn't lose any of the scorpions, and they are in fact back at full health, which is what's important. Also the war sphinxes, getting those up to full health is important too. <laughs> I'm glad, glad you, uh, you enjoyed the setup, Misanthrope. I'm guessing you're referring to the, the, uh, the incomplete, but uh, emergency scramble tunk setup right now. Which is uh, doing uh, doing better than I yeah my my Tomb King's composition is doing better than I had hoped in most situations and worse than I have expected against every dwarf stack, <laughs> which makes me weirdly proud in a way. Just a smidgen. Okay. Here's a question. How did that happen? That has to be a bug. I didn't lose a war sphinx. And I'm fairly sure I did not lose any of my heroes. Like, these were all kept safe. So how did these units take casualties? It must have been in the resolve resolution calculations after the end of the battle. But that should have been impossible because these were under my direct control. That's odd. That's an unfortunate bug because that, that's a war. War Sphinx is going to take a while to, rec to recruit again. And that's one of my core uh, heroes out of action again. Except, except, that's odd. I guess it's a display bug? Because those units are still here. I'm pretty sure these units are still here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I just grew some capacity, so that is the correct count of war sphinxes. And you. <laughs> okay, I don't know what was going on there, but uh, it's a bit odd. Uh, no worries, for some throat. I'm probably going to be wrapping up soonish, but you may catch one more battle. We'll see. I suppose. Okay, let's get these armies organized. Arandis! Got more units to deploy to you. And your guy can start getting defensive things. What am I thinking? Yeah, well, that's Wind of Magic Power Reserve is probably the most important thing there. And then let's mobilize our extra Scorpion capacity. ASAP. D-tip. I want you to stay close to Arandis. 
and let's mobilize our extra Sphinx capacity as well. Let's apply these to the levels. Two tap, two tap. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna want to push you up to Renowned and Feared. I forget what set, what set, what things that I have on Setra for extra movement range. Because he has something for campaign movement range that made me decide I didn't need uh, that di I didn't need to push him all the way to Renowned and Feared. Or was I thinking that for all my? Oh, oh, it's the Tomb Fleet Taskmaster. But I think I may be able to get more of them. So I, I'll, I'll, I won't, I won't push that my uh, Tomb King's past, uh, past, renowned and f up to renowned and feared just yet. I'll just get the lightning strike. Ah, hello Venus. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I continue to be buried in dwarfs. Although, uh, I, I just came out of a battle with Tyrion sailing across the ocean to attack me while the rest of the world gets buried by the Chaos Invasion. So, you know, usual, usual campaign stuff with the Order Tide. Currently, let's sum up the situation. Uh, the Warriors of Chaos are strength rank, strength rank 1, currently rampaging through the northern part of the world. Aye. The dwarfs declared war on me not long ago, or a while ago now, and have been repeatedly sending stack after stack after stack down into my territory. Uh, they are able to print stacks of their incredibly hard to obtain top tier units faster than I as Tomb Kings can replenish my army. That's been pretty difficult to hold on. Uh, but Having some actual quality stacks online, it looks like the tide may be turning, possibly. I'm, I'm pretty much doing regular Tomb King things and uh, putting together as many as many stacks as I possibly can. Uh, okay, that maxes out local recruitment capacity. Some tick should go join Cetra's group of four. And I can mobilize another army now. <laughs> And thank you, Venus. The War Sphinx, War Sphinx and uh, Scorpion groups have been uh, my saving grace this campaign for the most part. Not so much because of their raw frontline power, because it turns out if you charge a bunch of Sphinxes into an immovable line of dwarfs, the dwarf line still doesn't move. Uh, yet yeah, Scorpions, uh, Venus, they are still incredibly good at getting into trouble. But there is a there is a a bit of a secret or an adjustment, I guess, to the application of scorpions that uh, that I ha have not been had not been applying on previous occasions. I use them. Loosely speaking, it's this. This is kind of the secret to <laughs> deploying scorpions in an effective fashion. Two scorpions will die the moment ranged weapon, like rain, a ranged force trains their guns on them. Seventeen scorpions will cut through the ranged units before the ranged units can inflict enough damage, generally speaking. Uh, and this compounds with uh, with a handful of extra secrets 
Herald of the Scorpion. This is one per one one per. This is faction unique, but still, it's handy to have on your one like your first core Scorpion Lord. Bonus uh, twelve versus infantry, and then this Tom King's Lord trait: melee attack and melee defense plus five for Tom Scorpions. And then uh, the charge bonus melee attack and weapon strength for Scorpions and leadership weapon strength and magic resist for scorpions compounded with a war sphinx mounted tum king spamming resurrect and eventually should one of my necrotechs manage to survive long enough to get on a chariot a a uh heavily defensively spec necrotech spamming scorpion support abilities Like, they haven't hit the rank 7 traits yet, but like a casual 57 charge bonus and 59-49 isn't comes. terrible for these Tomb Scorpions, and the quantity helps a lot. And th just, uh, I guess it's an unlisted thing that uh, Tomb Scorpion animations are very good. The hugely disruptive to infantry formations, and kind of coincidentally dodge things very well. So they can they can punch through defensive infantry lines and mess with enemy ranged infantry before the enemy ranged infantry can effectively mess with them. Which proves quite helpful. Um Venus also asks, have bone giants been serving well? Well You could say that. Granted, Cetra's stack did die, along with four other supporting stacks, to a dwarf army. Granted, uh, it was kind of a... They're concentrated because of Lord specializations, because kind of I, I have trouble uh, picking out like between Blessing of the Asp and Ancient Stone for Lords, and between... Uh, Arrows of Asaf, which is needed for Bone Giants, and Revered Stone Masonry, which is needed for Yushati Great Bows, versus Master Charioteers and Stone Sentinels, which are needed for the two Sphinx types, and Scorpions. So yeah, they are a bit... they are concentrated into a, an army that specializes in that type. They've done... they did really well up until they went up against two high tier dwar like, thinking about it, practically speaking, they were outnumbered 2 to 1, because Setra was backed by 3 stacks of skeletons, but they were 3 stacks of skeletons. And they got run over by 2.5 stacks of dwarf artillery and iron breakers and slayers, and iron breakers and more slayers and organ guns and flame cannons. And have I mentioned that I watched a flame cannon, a splash anti-infantry artillery unit, delete a leveled, well-specced, single-entity hero moving fast on approach before they could actually get into melee range. Because that happened. That was a thing. Submit to your king. Cetra the Imperishable. Tomb King of Nehekara. Strike on my command. Right. So the plan right now is to move two groups of four armies, uh, a couple of uh, of main spec or like medium, or at least one lead lord, one kind of backup unit, uh, like useful supporting unit lord, and two lords full of fodder units on each side here, and I'm gonna have one army push through the dwarfs directly to the north, and one to the northeast. And hopefully, we can convince the dwarfs to maybe send their armies in another direction. Maybe. Address me as your highness. For now, I guess I just have to keep recruiting units. This is a temporary... Prince of Cycling. Research, research, what can I do here? 
Um, I... Suzu Shabti... Necro Sphinx, War Sphinx... Construct recruitment buildings, local recruit... Okay, this is all actually pretty good. Except for the Lord, who I don't really need, although I may as well put them in my empire for the, uh, for the unit capacity, I suppose. Um, let's see here. I guess I will start with the Lich Priest capacity. Because that's a little lacking at the moment. And then the Tomb Prince capacity. And then the Necrotech capacity. And then we'll work from there. Speed. Let notes. Need to push through more Ushab T cap. And let's get some tier 5 units going. Scorpions, please. Oh yeah, and a couple of couple of other reasons why scorpions are are um, a bit more a bit more practical than I realized uh, back when I was originally trying to work them out is quite simply because the scorpion building gives you two scorpions, and the scorpion trait and the scorpion skill on necrotechs gives you two scorpions, and quite simply. If you're comparing that like one building slot or trait or skill slot on an Ecrotech with like the one for a War Sphinx, generally speaking, I feel two Scorpions will get more done than a single War Sphinx. War Sphinxes are amazing, and I work on their cap as well, but that that's generally the reasoning I'm going for. Also, do I have pottery? Because uh, if I don't have pottery, I need to get potter. I need to get pottery. Okay. Lashiek, demolishing that, building walls, and then I'm getting pottery afterwards. Yeah, part of the reason for that is you can, as, as well, uh, Venus is that with the with the right trait you can boost you can boost scorpions a little further than you can sphinxes um, and then the, it just they're, they're a bit more evasive and so on but it is I guess it, it might be harder to keep two scorpions alive in a, a similarly difficult situation because a a war sphinx is still a war sphinx until it dies. But overall, I've been finding finding scorpions quite useful. Often at the moment, they've been working as alongside uh, war sphinxes, though. I've not had many occasions to really need a Necro Sphinx um, to really uh, put them to the test, but uh, that that's because I've been fighting so many dwarfs. No, I don't need the dwarfs to have more reasons to stay at war with me, Mr. Greenskin buddy. Okay, let's ready up uh, another boy. First channel, why is eternal? We need another knowledgeable light priest if I can. Incidentally, the treacherous trait can roll on uh, lich priests as well. However, because the trait is spec is listed for lord's army, it doesn't actually apply unless it's on a lord. Which is a little, a little unfortunate, but not a, uh, not not unprecedented with uh, the things CA tends to miss. 
it is kind of awkward. It it's it's almost it's almost practical to assess from in game, uh, because the description like the the listed descriptions are at least consistent. Uh, but it, it, it's still it's still but annoying that it's there, and it's hard to hard to read effectively. And, but, well, that the game just doesn't stop you from putting, or has, or just doesn't stop you from, from, uh, putting in place, um, things, combinations that just don't work. Now, where did the dwarf hero in this area go? Hmm, no idea. I need to... Rotate Tomb Princes and Necrotects. Okay, so you go. New Tomb Prince. Remaster isn't that useful because uh, horses are not very good mounts for combat. Yeah, you would normally. I, I I would agree there, Venus. You would normally think the Lord of the Army the hero belongs to, but there is actually a separate trait, a separate listing for, uh, like a, a separate flag for characters uh, for heroes army, and then another separate flag for characters army, which is like the presence of those kind of it strongly indicates it's just an oversight, something that wasn't seriously considered, uh, which is a little awkward for something that can make such a huge impact in the game. Like, like, trait farming is a thing, because it's so potent. Uh, like, the game has some really good traits, and many, fa like, many factions have both either really potent or really important early game, say, compositions that benefit hugely from, uh, from uh, Lords with the Right Traits. Okay, Thutep's gonna be recruiting here a bit longer. Got a Gore Sphinx and another Necro Sphinx to add to the pile. I think Cetra's done recruiting. We'll recruit a Hyro Titan somewhere else. Let's roll. Okay, etc. We don't have intel on what we'll be facing as we approach, say, Floating Village or Death Gorge. Probably Death Gorge, so I'm going to move up here and settle into ambush. I think I just need marble, incidentally, out of the things I need for that quest of Cetras. Actually, I have a thought. I'm gonna send this guy up with Cetra. Gonna transfer as many of these units as will fit into that guy's army, and this guy can sit here in a uh, Camry and recruit. There we go. Roll. Got Cetra's group ready to go, and Randy's group is still recruiting, scorpions and the like. Do I have more scorpion capacity online? No, I do not. This guy is still recruiting over here. Do I want Ushabti and your group? Yeah, I'll have 
I'll, I'll put a Shabti in this group, and I'll change this guy's name so that I know he's specced for. You've Shabti, Hyro Titans, and Necrosphinxes. By making, giving him the edgiest title I could accidentally conceive. In which case, I can probably also add Shabti to this guy's key, but the local recruitment key was full enough. Apparently I've maxed it out already, so... Where? Who is... Oh right, these, guys, these, these folks are maxing out the local recruitment key. Uh, let's slow down the Scorpion recruitment briefly to speed up the slower Sphinx recruitment. Yeah, that should even out there. So that, that stack gets moving at the same moment. And... Get these stacks replenishing as quickly as possible. And they can also global recruit some more units. Okay, research. Um, I'm actually already rotating Tomb Princess, so I can leave that for now. Let's get recruit capacity and construct recruitment cost. Um... My gathered armies are kind of in the process of replenishing after going from engagement to engagement. So that 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 that's why they're so beaten up. And I don't have a I don't have one turn replenishment on most of my armies. Because uh we don't have a huge amount of technology for replenishment rate and I don't have enough he because Tomb Kings have permanent hero cap. I don't have enough heroes to have replenishment rates sitting around in all of my armies. In addition, many of my armies are commanded by temporary lords who get rotated out each turn, so I spec them with uh like but mostly mostly because I, I spec them out with uh I already have some treacherous lords, so I don't need to keep the guy with a treacherous trait. Yeah, so I don't I spec them out with uh with kind of low tier unit bonuses and then uh faction wide bonuses. Essentially they print canopic jars. Rather than uh army replenishment bonuses and kind of long term engagement bonuses. My curse on these creatures. I still don't have enough canopic jars. Right, I don't think there's any immediate construction that requires attention. This is a prince that's being rotated through. Let's go! Hello! That's another army just wandering in from nowhere. Okay, I guess I have to turn some of my armies around. Uh, Karun has been getting its forces smashed, so of course it's starting to confederate in more factions. Dwarfs do have to deal with desert attrition. Okay, that's researched. Charge bonus 20 to every army of every faction. It's actually kind of nice. It's temporary Tomb Prince embeds into Thutep's army, I believe. He reduces infrastructure building cost. 
And I think that's all of Thutep's temporary people back together. He himself reduces construction cost by 35%. Sorry, construction time by 35%. And cost by 7% plus 15%. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. So, 90 plus zone 7 plus 10% uh, from the commandment allows the infrastructure buildings to build for free. Provided the dwarfs don't wander through and assassinate every hero in the stack, which so far they have been intent on doing. Right. Let's do recruitment calculations. <laughs> Welcome back, misanthrope. It is pretty neat, um, and it help, but it, and it helps a lot with Tom King's uh, building construction. Although you do have to have Thutep and like five other heroes, all with the Channel Valley Necrotect. Uh, follower. Incidentally, you'd get this follower from winning battles in mountainous terrain, which is a bit out of the way for uh, Tomb Kings, but it is worth fighting some battles in mountainous terrain as Tomb Kings to get that follower. 15% uh, to basically your green buildings, your infrastructure building cost. Uh, you can act. There is actually a uh, and eco economic cheese for Tomb Kings. I'm not using it this campaign, but I can, you know, I like. I think it's probably perfectly reasonable to use if you are uh, really, uh, if you really need that econ in a, in a Tomb Kings campaign. It's basically Tomb Kings architectural money laundering. Um, like the basic idea is a. Uh, uh, I take Thutep, who would make infrastructure buildings free, a uh, Thutep stack, which makes infrastructure buildings free in whatever region he's in, or province he's in. I put him right here, say at the intersection of three different provinces. I'm not sure if there's a four province intersection somewhere in this game. Um, one, two, three. It might work, if I think it might work here, actually. Um, there's a, there's a, this intersects, uh, if you own Land of Dervishes, one, two, three, and four. And basically what you do, what you do, uh, is you build, you build, uh, the Royal Burial Chamber, and the Nehakaran Citadel, both relatively expensive buildings. You can do the other infrastructure buildings as well, but you have to upgrade them through all the tiers. It takes a lot of time, and it doesn't give you as much money. So it's mainly the tier, f like the tier four ones, that matter. And uh, I only relatively recently learned this, but the game, when you demolish a building, factors in the building's value, not the cost you paid when building it. So even if you built the building for free, you demolish it for its value. So basically, you can money launder those Tomb Kings with, with, with you of government construction contracts um, by building the tier 4 economic buildings for free using Thutep and a bunch of Ch Channel Valley Necrotects, and then demolishing them once they're done for their full va for a portion of their full value. I think it's 60%. Now, normally you could initially you can only do this in one province because Thutep only benefits his, his the province he's standing in, and so it's the Channel Valley Necrotect. But if you say have an intersection of four provinces here, what you can do over the course of one turn is start, say you start with Thutep standing near the Black Pyramid of Nagash, the Great Mortis Delta. You can then build those infrastructure buildings for free. Then in the same turn, move Thutep down to the next province over, the Great Desert of Araby on the left, build the infrastructure buildings for free. Move down to Sudenberg, get those buildings building, 
and then move him over to your last province, say Dune, the Shifting Sands, and build those buildings. Oh, the, the Dwarfs of Antok, that might be where they're sending armies from. Where's Antok, exactly? Is it here? Yeah, I keep seeing armies down from that side. And then, when as soon as those buildings are finished building, you can demolish them for 60% of their full value. And, uh, just keep going. And that is, uh, until late game Tomb Kings. Eventually, Tomb Kings will reach the point where you're making, you know, a few... Uh, you're, you're making, you know, 10 or 20,000 a turn. And by that point, it's more effort than it's worth, usually. Um... Uh, but until late game Tomb Kings, essentially, that makes so much more money than the Tomb Kings can, can make directly, whether through their provinces or through uh, through battles and such. <laughs> it, it's slightly ridiculous. Anyway, that that is a uh, a version of Tomb Kings economy cheese. In case you're interested. <laughs> Right, Cetra, can I get you back down over here? Okay, what I'm gonna do, move Cetra down back here. I'm gonna try and bait this dwarf army, which of course is tier 4, tier 5 units, of course. Just casually printed out and strolling down my way. It is an absolutely delightful exploit, Venus. Uh, and I am going to plonk this army here as bait. Hello, hello! I think that I think this dwarf army can probably reach. It's hard to assess because they are in force march, so I can only see their force march range. At any rate, Kemri has enough, I think, to hold for at least a turn until they're ready to assault. The AI generally likes to likes to delay. The AI likes to delay a turn at least before before attacking old settlements. That's like a a large chunk of the value of walls isn't so much that the garrison can directly hold an attack from a from a strong army as the AI will go. Hmm, I should wait a little bit before ev immediately attacking, and that buys you time to actually respond. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna back this army off. Uh, I'm actually gonna force march it up this way, just so it doesn't factor into the AI's decision making here. Hopefully, I can convince that dwarf army to at least approach this stack with the mentality that I should get it out of the way and then I can hit Kemri. Now, let's see about heroes. Um, more temporary Tomb Princes. How about Lich Priests? Okay. And Necrotex before I... Okay, no, no candidates, but I... I just have to rotate people out. There's pretty much no reason not to trade, no mechanical reason at least, not to trade farm as Tomb Kings because your heroes are free. The okay, I understand it can be a little boring. It, for many people find trait farming more than a little boring, <laughs> in fact, but it is a. Uh... I am compulsive enough about the, uh, the final composition of my armies that I feel the need to engage in it. Okay, we'll pull. This will make a good temporary Tom Prince potentially. But I would like Chariot Masters if I can get him. Assassinating Specialist and leave it. And I need to. I need recon to the southeast of Black Pyramid of Dagash because I'm a little nervous about things coming up there. So I will throw my trait farming Lich Priest over here. And that one turn of cleanse corruption can be helpful. 
Right, is there anything I can do with the tip up here? Not really. This army is moving, moving. These are treacherous. No scorpion capacity coming online just yet. This army is full. Three turns until I can get another cask of souls. Zetra's army is full. Okay, all armies are in position. Actually, I should check recruit options here. Because. Is this full? Yes, that army is full as well. In that case, this guy can probably squeeze in a bit more recruitment. And. If there wasn't an emergency near Kemri. I could recruit another Hyra Titan. I'll leave the Tomb Prince and Necrotech capacity until I need it. Uh, let's get some more bonuses for Cambrian War Sphinxes. And unassigned skill points. At this point, I'm just going to turn off the unassigned skill points notification. Because I recruit some princes at max rank, and I still need to cycle them. <laughs> right. Well, it seems Reichland's struggling with chaos, which should hopefully reduce the chances that they will war deck me, and excellent! You came! Fantastic! Uh, I want these armies to be in good shape. Let's see, do they have Iron Drakes? Do they have Fire Resist? Okay, they don't have Fire Resist. I can, I can put the... Weapon strength on. I might put as well put it on the Tomb Guard. Scarecrow banner doesn't really matter. Let's do this. It's gonna take one moment to turn on the lights here. Alright, the last battle of today's stream, in which we shall attempt to answer Venus's question, how well have Bone Giants been doing? And hopefully my Tomb Princes will not die. Because... Tomb Princes with Chariot Master, when mounted on chariots, are... Pretty damn good fighters, but I'm not very good at handling chariots. <laughs> to say the least. And dwarfs are also pretty good fighters. Alright, so most of this stack is going to want to be on in guard mode. Uh, we've got our... Oh yeah, Cetra's caster is out of commission. I guess, Cetra, you're the caster. An Ecrotect is a temp guy, but he's not on a, on, on a mount. Not on a mount, so I'm not going to make combat. These are top-of-the-line, frontline Tomb Princes. They better not die. One of them's been adopted, and... Um, I believe their patron is Novillian, patron of Prince Speedwagon the First. Okay, scatter out the Tomb Prince, the Tomb Guard, a little bit, so that the artillery just doesn't just demolish them all at once. Oh, 
Ready the Bone Giant. Ready the Shabti Great Bow units. Let's stop this. Are the dwarfs gonna be aggressive? Yeah, the dwarfs gonna be aggressive. Okay, this Tomb King is on foot. Oh, I should uh, assign these to control groups, mostly so that they stay on the left side of the card deck and don't juggle around every time a unit reinforces. Have these folks front line. Necrotect, stay back and stay hidden. Your heals are valuable. Uh, and Skeleton Spearmen up to the front. Actually, pull the higher Titan back a little bit. Do indeed have int <laughs> overlapping fields of fire or interlocking fields of fire. 448. We have 350 range. I we're gonna struggle with their organ guns. If it really comes to it. Hmm. And their cannons. Are they committing to engaging us, however? If they're not, I'm going to okay. I'm going to commit the immortal, the immortal Tomb Prince, and see if I can't burn their cannon ammunition. Uh, I definitely do not outrange their cannons. Uh, organ guns. It depends. It's legendary difficulty, so I can't easily check. The UI, in fact, is supposed to prevent me from checking, but sometimes you can get the comparison values out. Um, I might try that in a bit, but we definitely don't outrange the cannons. Uh, bone giants with a range of 350 roughly match the range of organ guns. It depends on whether or not the dwarfs have... depends on the tech bonuses the dwarfs have. Um, At one point in time, it also would have depended on whether or not they had an engineer and the skills the engineer had, but that got nerfed, so... Yeah. Bone Giants are very long range, but it's three, 350 is, uh... Like, 350 is artillery range. That's just not, uh, not enough to outrange dwarf long range artillery. Evasive action! I could probably win this battle in a more aggressive and less cautious fashion, but that would leave Cetra's army in poor shape, uh, which I do not want to do, given that there may may well be five more dwarf stacks sitting around the corner. So I am going to try and take the sting out of their artillery before that becomes an if, 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 before actually closing distance and engaging with the bone giants. Ideally, I'd also like them to come to us, because that will stagger out their units, and dwarfs are slow. And they have a better, better, much better infantry line than I do. So, if they flank around, it will be no end of trouble, and ow, that was like a quarter of Tomb Prince's health in one good volley. Cannons are almost out, come on. Almost.
Alright, pull the Tomb Prince back a little bit. Let me just verify the range on the organ guns. It depends on their tech level. Organ guns are right there. Let's see if I can cajole the AI into telling me the... Yeah, okay. So... The organ guns are currently sitting at 400 range. 50 more than the Bone Giants. Um... The Bone Giants could definitely close dis close that gap, close distance, and fire easier. But it would, uh... It, it would hurt. And they, the, the organ guns would be able to fire on my other units well in advance. Okay. Dodging organ guns is sometimes a little trickier. Sometimes, usually cannons are more accurate than organ guns. No, uh, or perhaps more specifically, if you are evasive, you're much more likely you get hit by less of an organ gun volley than a cannon volley. Well, uh, thanks being equal. They easily have enough artillery firepower to kill several of my constructs uh, if I'm not careful with this. The safest way to engage is to taunt them into shooting at things that are not my constructs. Ideally, single entities that are relatively fast and evasive and can be healed. Technically, chariots are a little large to be doing this, uh, but I don't have... I don't have a wizard on a horse. Come on, speed wagon, you can do it. <laughs> no shadow facts. I understood that reference, and throat. I guess this charges the uh, the prince's less than 50% health ability as well. Okay, I want to be a little careful with my tomb princes, but that is the enemy artillery out of ammo. back a little bit. And try and block off the flanks. Get those Tomb Princes patched up. Just ready to engage. Does Cetra have any magic missiles in his cast? Wool. I don't think he does. <laughs> Novillian says Wizard on a Horse is the name of my new folk metal album. Thank you, Novillian. I look forward to it. Okay, push up from the side and just close the bone giant range. Start pelting him. I want to be a little careful here if they do start coming in because my infantry is, uh, is significant. I was going to say my infantry is significantly slower than my constructs, but I forgot I had bone giants. So we're good. Okay, we'll approach from around here. Oh, we've broken line of sight with them. Bit of an awkward hill. 
it's actually bad for us since we have the range advantage right now. So uh, keep us further back. I'm not sure if they'll actually start to look for us. But I'll aim to be in position if they do. <laughs> it will it will help close distance. This would actually the diff blade would actually be really good if I was doing a scorpion stack. As it is though, I think it may coincidentally help. Uh, you may be right in that uh, it's kind of coincidentally because there's a uh, what I, it's resulted in them doing is them scattering trying to look for us. Um, so then they're, they're shuffling their units around, and I can close without being exposed to the majority of their units. So they'll they'll probably shuffle a hopefully at least shuffle a few of their units at a time into range. Uh, and this can happen. Alright everyone, weapons free. Sire! Also make sure these guys are on guard mode. Do I actually have Ark? Maybe I don't have Ark. Can, can you please just shoot them? There we go! Just let the let units target what they will. Most of these things are reasonably high value. Not very good. God damn those turn. So. Just let our units retarget at their leisure. Pyro Titan. Fire. Get some cheap casts down, Cetra, so that you proc the uh, unit healing. May as well spirit leech their lower armor units, so those rangers. Speaking of rangers, can I get the great bow of Shabti on either side to kill those rangers? That's one of their main threats. And also, I will plonk some units down on them. Tomb Prince, go. Cetra, go with them. Sharp T resume firing on whatever targets present themselves. Uh, get clear of those giant slayers. Keep 
keep getting clear of those giant slayers. Come on. How are those giant slayers not disengaged? Can't get them clear of the giant slayers, they just refuse to disengage. Pulling some of the bone giants back so they can keep firing. Iron Titan's probably okay where it is for now. The Shabti Great Bow unit has taken so much damage. You get that Necrotech out of that. Actually losing a Chapter Great Bow units, it's pretty annoying. The issue with this composition for Cetra I've, I've been finding consistently is some finding something to front line with. I don't have enough Tomb Princes yet, and that's pretty much what I need to hold the front. Princes too banged up. To me, never tire. You see, I really am a dwarf main at heart. I can't believe I shall that. Be that a front line could conceivably forward against this little pressure. Let's do a cycle charge with this tomb. Okay, I don't know what all that damage is coming in from, but that was painful. to hold that line. Like this Storm Prince needs to pull back. would fare better. Break them. Oh, I lost one of the Tomb Princes here. Damn it. Speedwagon is immortal. Oh, that's okay. Should be okay, but that's really annoying still. Uh, 
Okay, need the bone giants all in as well. Mightiest of kings. Those hammerers. Boom, Fire if you still have ammo. Black Prince. I mean, there's also the fact that Sekiro just really isn't an amazing commander. Regular Tomb Prince. A uh, regular Tomb King might well be better. <laughs> Anyway, I haven't had the best of luck with Cetra's Bone Giant army against dwarfs specifically. Like the dwarfs don't just just don't die before they get into melee contact. And that takes a lot of the effectiveness out of a uh, out of the bone giant style of things. I guess maybe I should have engaged with the bone giants a little more aggressively. Um, because the bone, the bone Giants actually held up better in melee than the rest of the stack. I will also note, I'm fairly confident I performed worse than Order Resolve would have in this situation. Which is unfortunate, given that I was hoping to keep this army in good shape so I could head north again immediately. Not entirely certain... ...what I should be doing better here. Although there are some situations where just you will never perform better than Order Resolve. But I don't know that this is. I, I don't have know a clear reason why this would be one of them. Not familiar enough with the engagement profile of a stack like this, I guess. Let's get in what healing we can. I believe auto resolve does account for unit stat bonuses. Okay, so I lost the standing tomb friends. That's going to keep us here for four turns, I think, because I do want them back. All of the tomb guard, three of the bone giants, and two of the great bow shabti. At least I have enough recruit capacity to keep pumping them out all at once. But that was a uh, that was an exceptionally poor engagement. I think auto resolve would have cleaned it up without uh, without losing any units as well. I mean, if I would have hazard a guess as uh, assuming this is operating under the assumption that auto resolve was overestimating my relative performance, uh, and I I I I'm more inclined to think that was just me handling it poorly. Uh, Thank you, Venus. Uh, uh, that would be lovely. And that that's probably going to be the last battle of the, the session as well. I'll handle the cleanup next time around. But yeah, this I think Order Resolve would not have wiped out any of my units cleaning this up. And uh, if I were to guess, it overestimated the Force March penalties. Oh right, they weren't on Force March though. They were on Force March beforehand, but they, they this was them attacking, wasn't it? So they weren't now. Hmm. All right, I'm not definitive. I I have some ideas, but I'm I'm not familiar enough with this this profile to be to be uh 
definitively sure what I'm doing wrong. To perform this much worse than auto resolve. Uh, yeah, two armies were in the engagement. One of my armies was on Force March. Oh, and there's another hostile army coming in on these stacks. Annoyingly enough, I think I have to sit here and recruit. I can't, I won't be able to actively spawn and attack that army without interrupting my recruitment. But yeah, there was a, most of the infantry was low tier infantry provided by a backup army. That was also the bait army there. Anyway. That's all I'm going to do for this session. Um, I might have to review or just drop Cetra's composition if it's not going to be able to pull its weight, or if I don't know how to use it. But I guess we'll we'll see about that in the future. Uh, might do some intervening research. Um, for now, I'm going to wrap things up for today's stream. Thank you very much for watching, folks. It's been great having you. Uh, great hanging out, and I hope you folks had fun. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad you enjoy my uh, my insistence on on uh, <laughs> narrating and explaining my actions for Synthrope. Hopefully, it's helpful as well. Bearing in mind, Tomb Kings are not uh, not exactly my most proficient race, but well, I know how to use the scorpions, kind of at least. <laughs> Anyway, I will be continuing this campaign again tomorrow, I believe, uh, barring unforeseen circumstances. Let me see if there's anywhere I can send you folks along to while I'm at it. And also ramble through my usual outro. Okay, so my next stream is going to be more of this campaign. Total War Warhammer 2, Tomb King's Minor Disaster Edition. That's on Thursday the 14th at 0200 UTC. Uh, if you need that in your local time or otherwise, I'll be putting up links and announcements and stuff. Or you can see my stream schedule down below or on my About page. You can follow me right here on Twitch. You can follow me at Dubious Physics on Twitter. I also have a Discord, putting a link to that in the chat. You can get announcements and stuff from any of those. Uh, it's a little, uh, all right. It's a little different from uh, from Total War Warhammer, but I will I'll send you folks along to a sl hopefully slightly more relaxing uh, Paper Mario stream, being run by Saint Brenner, who's a uh, very cool lady who streams various games, often uh, many of the classics. And uh, yeah, that's going to be about it. Thank you very much for watching again. Do remember to take care of yourselves. You were absolutely worth it, and I hope to see you folks in the future. This is Dubious Physics, signing off. Bye.
Show them. We do not serve. We rule. 